do you see us? Are we live or not? right now everybody here i come <laughs> all right everybody here we are um i'm trying to see if we're on live i think we are according to thomas welcome everybody thomas are you there yes i am here guys are we good to go are we in the feed we're looking good on my end man all right right excellent sorry everybody uh start off the show <laughs> let me uh let me uh, get the sound out of here and uh let's get started so welcome to 343 labs 343 tv we are here um we are coming to you every day uh from hold on welcome to three, four, three. um we are here every day uh from one o'clock to two o'clock <laughs> uh monday through saturday i believe are, are we on are we actually what are we doing on sundays uh thomas uh we'll do some reruns of the show so you can catch those um right, it's so always fun to check out but yeah pretty much monday through saturdays is when we're doing the live uh action and on sundays we're we're um we're streaming every uh, everything right that we did throughout throughout the week just like correct. a five or six hour stream or something like that mm -hmm. and that starts at one as well Yes. Okay, so that starts at 1, and that goes all the way to, like, the afternoon, late afternoon sometime, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so you could binge watch it on Saturday. Yeah. On, uh, it's, it's, on Sunday, if it, you like. It can be fun. You know, people like to check it out and get in the chat. Right. So, again, we're here, 343 uh, TV. My name is Abe Duque. I'm an instructor at 343 Labs. Um Max is our boss. We're trying to impress him by getting a million subscribers to the channel. Is that right? <laughs> That's correct. Uh, we, uh, we, so if you like what you've been seeing so far, please don't forget to subscribe and uh, at least hit the like button if you like it. And go ahead and hit the dislike button if you don't. Uh, we like any type of feedback. Um, today's show and every Friday's show is now um, about hardware. We call it Hardware Basics. And basically, <laughs> sorry for the pun, basically we're here every Friday to kind of get you all the answers you might want uh, related to um, hardware. So um, I always bring some stuff to play with and, and, and you know, show you guys. Um, but I'm really interested in all your questions, if you have any, um, um, you know, just put them in the chat it would be great to have you guys uh you know ask me things about hardware and and when it comes to any type of hardware i've been collecting hardware since the 80s believe it or not and uh i've it's been it's really been my life more than the making of music the actual uh, playing with hardware has been my uh, my thing 
Anyway, let's get started. Well, let me just, uh, I mean, you see Thomas in the background, but let me just let Thomas do his thing. Thomas does a, a little spiel that he does at the beginning of the show always. Thomas, uh, take it away. Hey, everybody. Yeah, so as Abe was mentioning, you know, we're here on 343 TV, which is our streaming series uh, that is brought to you live every day at 1 p.m. EST. And this show is presented by 343 Labs, which is a, a music school and community. You know, we're based in Manhattan originally, but we've expanded to offer, you know, all sorts of online classes. Abe is teaching many of those right now. And we also recently opened up a physical location in Berlin. So, you know, just encourage you guys to check out uh, the website, 343labs.com. Uh, if you're interested in taking some classes with us, we've got a bunch starting online all the time. We also have, um, you know, we're getting ready to potentially start some classes in person in the city again. So if you want information on that, you can find that online or feel free to uh, reach out to us and email or call us. But uh, otherwise, you know, just like Abe mentioned, please subscribe. It helps us out a lot. You know, like the video, um, be sure to engage in the chat and tell your friends about what's going on here on 343 TV. But um, it should be an exciting stream. The last few have been really cool. So I'm excited. All right. Excellent. So let me just uh, go ahead and get right into it. So let's see. Where's my overhead? Uh, nope. That's, this is this one. All right. So today we're back to having our, our little uh, 909 set up. Last week we talked about the 909. The week before that we had the 808 in here. Um, this week we're going to continue with the 909. And uh, uh, we're going to add on a few friends. I, you know, at the end of the last uh, show, we started to get the MoFo involved, uh, programming it via its uh, the instrument, um, uh, external instrument program or sequencer in here. And that's always a lot of fun. We might be doing that uh, again. Uh, but I brought another little friend uh, to play with today. And, and maybe there's another one sitting in the background that maybe if we have time, we'll get to um, to go ahead and, and play with. But this is the Korg Mono Tribe. It is one of my favorite things that Korg has done in um, in the last, I don't know, I think this is about six or seven years old now. It's, a, it's, it's an analog machine. It's quite a unique machine. I'm really surprised that Korg actually ever made this thing and, and put it out there. Uh, it's an analog machine, and it's really, really uh, a wonderful thing uh, for analog lovers. Uh, made out of metal, metal case. Um, not that expensive. And I tell you, this thing sounds fantastic. Uh, let me just get it going. So, got it started there. Uh, basically, it's just uh, has some drums in there you can use for whatever, and then it's just a one voice. So if you guys uh, know anything about Korg synthesizers, I think one of the most unique and maybe, uh, you know, um, I guess, how, how can we put it, uh, the, 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 the most sought after of the uh, Korg synthesizers is the Korg MS-20. I have an MS-20 sitting over here. I don't know if you can see me touching anything over here, but the Korg MS-20 is um, is probably, you know, the, the one that everybody thinks about when they think about Korg. Uh, the MS-20 has some really cool things in it, especially the filter. Uh, now, this, this Monotribe has actually an oscillator from there, and the filter setup is not, not the setup because that, that's a dual filter uh, synth, but it has one filter from the, that, that filter, so it sounds a lot like the MS-20, and if you guys ever heard the MS-20, you know it's bleepy and, and, and it sounds really cool. So um, you, you, can, you can program it. I'm gonna, uh, there's a programming in there. I'm just going to take the programming out of there, and I'm just going to hit play. Uh, nothing is happening because there's no actual programming going in there. Uh, there's, so I, actually, I'll need to start it. I have it synced up, and I'll show you how it's, how it's synced up in a little bit, but I'm going to start the playback on it. And now I'm going to record some parts into it. By So this is, this is the, the, the selector for what, what, uh, what octave you're in, and this is your kind of little keyboard that you can play with it. So I'm going to make sure that the level is up. And I'm just going to play a couple of notes. So that right there is uh, the way you kind of can play the notes in there. Up and down the octaves. Lower octave. And higher octaves. Let me get the 
notes to change here. So I have it. There we go. So hold on. Just got to get it set up. So. Okay, so basically it's not running now because I don't have a, a trigger for this uh, for the sync in it. So let, let's get that set up before I actually try to make any sound with this. Um, so the way that it works is that the rim shot here on the 909 has a... Um, so let me just get that started and running. And then I'll select... It's in step mode, so I'll instrument select it for rim shot. And I'll select it to give me 16 across. And on the back of the 909, what I have is a connection where it says trigger out. And it uses the programming from the rim shot so that you could send out a trigger. The trigger is a way that we use, um, th that we, what we use to, to send a clock or a way to step through an external sequencer on another device. This is old systems, but we actually still use them today in a, in a lot of the Eurorack setups. And now you can see the thing is running because it's receiving the clock from the 16th notes that I have here. If I want it to be eighth notes, I could just skip every other one. And now it's gonna run at a slower pace, an eighth note pace. I can make it run at a weirder pace. I could just make quarter notes and then it'll just be running very slow. You see how slow it runs right there? But let's keep it at 16th notes. And let's hit record. And that was quick, and I created a little, a little par part with it. So let me show you how easy it is to have some fun with this thing. You know, my, one of my favorite things to do is just kind of forget about what these knobs and levers do, and just kind of just turn them at random. get really crazy results with it. Now that's the drums. I don't want to play with the drums right now. Keep this in one place. The thing is kind of moving on me. So if I don't like what, I, what I've got, I can just kind of erase it again and redo the recording. Now this is the way that I control how, the high pitch and lower pitch sounds. Nice, nice low bass. So maybe it'll be fun to have this kind of play along with my 909 in a way that it would be good to program. So uh, let's uh, let's get some some kick drums in there. No, maybe that'll give me a nice little background to what I'm doing here with this thing. So I'm just going to instrument select the bass drum, and I'm going to play in some bass drums. And let me add some attack to this. Now. And I'm just having fun. I break down what's happening here. This is the waveform that you're using. This is the resonance, or in, in Korg's case, they call that peak. And this is the opening of the, of the filter. There's an LFO that I can use to control a few things here. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty cool. Now I'm gonna try it again, and maybe here. For some reason, my octave control doesn't seem to be changing octaves on me. See, it's just playing the same note. I don't know if that's broken or not. Oh, now it's working. See, I could. I had to change the range le lever here. That's cool. 
bunch of things going in there all right so that that's a kind of a little bit of an introduction to sorry for some reason i started I... okay let's stop that for a second okay so uh, for some reason itunes went on for a second playing a track that i had up there anyway so that's a little bit of an intro it's a pretty awesome machine there's let me show you how it gets synced up there's a little connection here. Now it's running by itself. Let's get it to stop. Um, it, there's a little connection there with a eighth inch connector. This eighth inch connector connects to the back of the 909's trigger output. And then this is the trigger input. It receives the pulse because the trigger is just the pulse. And I program the pulse with the, with the rim shot. And then I have a way to control the speed and make this sync up. So there's a little inter internal sequencer in here. That internal sequencer will just run and will uh, you know play, but with the rim shot as a clock source, so it, it gives it a clock source, that will actually uh, run in sync with it. Pretty simple, but super efficient. All right, so how are we doing, Thomas? We're doing really good, man. We got some more people joining us in the chat here. So Great. We got TWD Industries back. David Schwartz. Always good to see him. Max Wild was popping in here a little while ago. So it's good to see that going on. Again, some really cool sounds out of the Mono Tribe there. So I missed a little bit of the intro, but is the Mono Tribe analog? And, and what's it got going it's on? It's 100% analog. 100% okay. analog. There's a. Uh, let's uh, let me get you to. Let's talk to you directly. So it's, yeah, 100% analog. Uh, it has, you know, everything you'd want out of a, a tiny little analog synthesizer. And I think you could pick these up for under 200 bucks these days. Um, they're a lot of fun. There's batteries in them. There's a little speaker in it, so you could just kind of play it on the go if you wanted to. And, uh, I mean, standalone, it's a little tough to, like, you know, get a lot of satisfaction from it. Because uh, you can make a cool pattern, and it does have a little bit of a drum set up inside with like a kick, a snare, and a hi hat. Uh, yeah. But you can't do really much more than just go beyond that one pattern. Um, but when you have it hooked up in in this scenario, you can really get to go using it and and having a lot of fun with it. So let's let's do that. Let's start. I, I figured today would be a good a ch good chance to like kind of just get a track started, and we'll mm -hmm. we'll use these uh, these things that we've been playing with to like drop them into a, a DAW and just get them in there and, and start playing with them. So let's go back to the overhead and let's get it together with my DAW. So now I'm here in Ableton Live and let's see, let's start Ableton Live and I already have it synced up. Again, the sync goes out of Ableton Live's uh, MIDI interface and then goes into the the uh, 909, today I'm syncing the 909 via DINSYNC, uh, which is Roland's proprietary uh, pre or um, MIDI or proto MIDI setup. Um, the cool thing about the 909 is that it had both DINSYNC and regular uh, MIDI sync. So I could have just synced it up with MIDI sync, but I chose to do the DINSYNC because I was already set up for that since the 808 and didn't want to change the cables around. So uh, that's all good. Uh, it's all synced up, and when the 909 turns on, then the 909 is going to shoot out the triggers that I programmed with the rim shot, and then the this guy will go. Now, the MoFo, well, that's another story. We still have that in there. We still have it hooked up with the MIDI out of the, of the 909 so that we can actually pr uh, program uh, the sounds out of that uh, with the external sequencer. I mean, or the, the yeah, the... the the external instrument sequencer inside of the 909. So let's uh, let's start. Let's now we start that. There's the uh, there's that the kick drum and that uh, mono tribe. But let's let's just get that kick drum going. And as you can see, it's already coming into my DAW. I have an input here in my 
uh, 15 and 16 on my uh, Apollo 16. And I'm pretty much ready. Let me just make sure that this is the kick that I want. I'm going to add a little bit of accent to this uh, kick, maybe. So let's just get the accent going in there. So I'm going to instrument select and do the accent. I'm just going to get that to be nice, powerful. Now it's a little too powerful, so let me lower the level. I don't want to. You don't want to record something so hot that's in the it's in the red. You want to keep things out of the red. So that's that looks like a super decent level there. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit with the tuning of it, so I can have a, a punchier, higher pitched one. And since we're doing techno, I can show the certain the decay, but I do want a long decay on that. So just doing techno, I think that maybe that maybe we'll record a couple of them. We'll record that one like that. So let's just hit record here. And as you see, it's already recording. And I'll stop. And then I'll, I'll take one that's lower frequency and hit that and do that. And now let's see what else I can do with this. Maybe one with a shorter decay. Who knows? I might need that. And maybe one lower with a short decay as well. So now that I have four of those, you know, if you want to keep good housekeeping, I think you should change the colors at least. I mean, the better thing to do is to go in there and, and, and actually change the, um, the names of everything so I could have, you know, a, a good kind of a setup for, you know, my workflow. But for now, for the sense of you know, just keeping time flowing here or things flowing here, I'm just going to color code them so that I can kind of remember them like that. So now that that's like that, we really don't need to have the, the 909 kick drum playing anymore. I can lower the volume here. And I can get this guy back into the game. And I could start one of these kick drums. And that should, that should be going right in there. So let me just make sure that this is coming through. I'm going to set up another track to record in from 15 and 16. Same way we have that. Making sure to take out the 909 from there so it doesn't... Let me just make sure that that's the input that's actually doing it. So if I lower that, you see the input level that's happening there. Just make sure that that's the one that's coming through. And I'm going to start fresh with this thing and just go nuts with it and record some. And put it in record mode. I'm, I'm just going to take anything that sounds good and fun and I'm just going to record it real quick. And I'm just gonna collect a bunch of stuff. Why not? You know, that's cool. Let's try it out. take individual steps out by just you know I could put it back in by putting back in like that but once again I really love this thing because you could just have fun with it you know let's just use your knobs to reach for places and things Let me program it one more time. And, and uh, 
here we go. I'll do it one more time. I didn't have the range set up here so that I could. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm just take one of those. Maybe I'll take a few of those and then just pick and choose. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I have enough for now with this. I can lower the volume on that and then go check out what's going on here in my once again I'm gonna color code these. Color coding will help me identify what is what. I think I like the last one best. Oh, I like that. I'm going to keep that one. That one's going to be the main one. So I like to kind of put those up on the same row so I can have a nice little scene built. Let's see what. That's the other bass drum. Immediately, I'm going to spruce it up with a little bit of uh, some effects. So we'll take some of Ableton's uh, reverb, maybe. Actually, I already have some reverb sitting on my returns here. So I'll just go ahead and send some of that to Ableton. So let's try the cathedral here. All right, that's pretty cool. I'm feeling that. Anyway, I'm going to stop for a second because I've been going pretty long just kind of at it and not really uh, giving you guys to, a chance to talk to me. How, how are we doing, Thomas? Doing well, man. We got Jeff, or Hefe B, in the chat saying that it looks like fun, messing around with all this hardware. It is fun, and that's, that's basically why I like the hardware. It's because it becomes more fun than just uh, playing with a mouse. I mean, it's always fun to play in, with, with software, but there's, mm -hmm. there's a point where fun increases once you get two hands involved, you know, and, and, and you're able to turn knobs and, and use a, a different type of connection to, to, the, to the sound that you would have just uh, through the mouse. I agree. I think the, the hardware brings a lot of feel into the music, and uh, it, it always inspires different ideas, so there's a huge plus to that. All right. I see Andrew Duke is in the uh, chat once again. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, from Halifax, uh, Canada. Um, Let's see. So, guys, uh, I'm yeah, Regine. as always. I'm really, really interested in your questions. So, if you have any questions about what I'm doing right now, how I'm doing it, if you want me to demo anything in particular, I can do that. Uh, and if you have questions on something else, maybe we can uh, go there. Um, so, uh, we're almost at the halfway point. And since we stopped already, maybe we could do the halfway point uh, sort of announcements now. What do you say, Thomas? Cool, that sounds good. Yeah, it's good time. And so um, it will throw it over to me for a minute. But uh, like I mentioned at the top of the stream, we're on 343 TV today uh, with Abe for Hardware Basics. But we are, you know, running streams every day of the week um, with reruns on Sunday. So these streams are taking place at 1 p.m. EST, covering a variety of topics, you know, related to music production, all sorts of things from hardware like today's show to different types of software like Ableton, Logic, um, you know, we got Techno Tuesdays with John Selway, um, so all different types of stuff, but that all, you know, under the umbrella of 343 TV is brought to you by 343 Labs, which is the music school based in New York, um, also online, and now in Berlin, so I'd encourage you guys to please, you know, subscribe to the channel, there's a bunch of other great tutorials on the channel for you guys to check out as well as all the other live streams we're doing um it's going to be going on almost two months now which is really exciting of just non-stop everyday streaming um check out 343labs.com we've got a bunch of courses starting up soon you know abe's starting a mixing and mastering course on monday 
you know, still space in that class to join. Um, but we also have, you know, Ableton classes starting up. You know, we can offer mixing and mastering. As I mentioned, uh, sound design and synthesis with John Selway. You know, logic classes, uh, vocal production, songwriting. So if you're looking for, you know, an in-depth experience learning, you know, whether it be online or, you know, we're going to be offering some stuff in person soon uh, in New York, hopefully. So I'd encourage you just to go check out the website, see what we have to offer. And if you guys have any questions or feedback, uh, please don't hesitate to call us or email us. And you can find all that information on the website. Um, but otherwise, I think uh, I'll probably throw it over back to Abe, uh, you know, check out what else we got going on for the rest of the stream. Hey, Thomas, did you mention that we're looking to open up and do some in-person classes now coming up? Yeah, I mentioned it briefly uh, beforehand, but yeah, so we're, we're looking to try, try to start some um, small, you know, socially distanced classes um, in August. So the info for those are on the website. You know, right now we actually have the online classes and in-person classes all in the same section. Uh, I'll put a link in the chat uh, to find all the info on that. But yeah, we're basically going to you know, start opening up, you know, obviously taking a bunch of different precautions to make sure everybody's staying safe. But if you are looking to get into, you know, our classroom, which has got the nice studio monitors, you know, some gear and stuff for you guys to use in there, um, that is going to be an option starting soon. So anybody who's excited for that, you know, check check out the link in the description and feel free to uh, reach out with any questions. All right. Thank you for that, Thomas. Mm -hmm. So let's keep going here. So um, we're back to... Uh, Let's let's actually play what we had going on earlier, uh, just to refresh our memories. We came up with that. I mean, it's a good beginning, and you know, usually I don't I, I don't like to hoard. I like to kind of collect a lot of parts when I'm playing with hardware to just kind of you know see what I can get. I don't you know I I feel like sometimes I'll get something great and I'll say like oh I'll come back to that and then I never actually do. And with, with hardware, a lot of the times you got to, if you have something going on, you need to kind of capture it there because you'll probably never see it again. That's the, that, that's kind of the, the, the way that goes. So, um, so I tend to record a lot of things. I, I set myself up to record and w while I'm jamming, I record and, and grab whatever. Uh, maybe later I'm going to, you know, love it. Maybe I won't. Uh, but let's say I, I, I really like this one part, but once I, once I have something that I know I'm going to use and then I'm, I'm not necessarily like super psyched about the other parts, I'm going to just go ahead immediately and delete them. I'm not going to, you know, hang around hoarding parts. Hoarding parts can come to, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, haunt you later because you'll, you'll, you'll be stuck with like a, a feeling of inadequacy for not using everything you have. And uh, you, you need to kind of move away from that as soon as possible. So be quick with your decisions. Just you like this, keep that. Let's get rid of everything else and let's move forward. Uh, you could always collect parts um, as we did. And uh, hoarding never really helps. It really kind of clutters up the, 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 the possibility for clarity to come in and what we're doing. So right now we have uh, this part going. And I'm just going to rename this here, this part to the... Um, Mono Tribe, and I'll name this here to 909, sorry, 909 Kick, and it's just because I really do want to have um, everything kind of, uh, you know, set up for me to kind of be able to view and quickly, you know, get to it's, housekeeping is super important when you're working on music and if you get yourself into the habit of like like you know doing it from the from the beginning while you're producing you don't have to go later and do it and, and what, what happens is that when you try when you do it later it it, it 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 if it piled up it tends to be like a big task and it's like oh it's like cleaning your room when you haven't tried to keep it clean for you know a month or so and you're like oh no my god and 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 then you have to spend the whole day maybe doing it uh, and, and that's always some something to like, you know, procrastinate on. But if you get your, yourself in the habit of doing a little bit here, a little bit there as you move through, uh, it'll never get to that point. Anyway, um, I sound like a dad, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, let's, uh, let, let's, let's get this guy involved now. Um, just uh, the last kind of looks and views at the, at the and w when I meant this guy, I meant the, um, the mofo. Uh, let me just show you the overhead one more time. So right now I'm looking at the at the monotribe. I just wanted to kind of just give you the, a little bit more of a look at it. 
Uh, this is a speaker. It has batteries, a little battery placed there for batteries. Um, the outputs are headphone output. It has a, a, a headphone output here, and then it has audio in, which is really interesting. You can have an actual audio input, which means that I could run stuff through this filter, which is kind of cool because you kind of have now a filter that you can kind of use uh, however you like. And then um, you have the sync in, and it also send out sync. So if you want to sync another device that receives this old kind of um, trigger-based uh, uh, sync, you can uh, get that kind of daisy chained and going. Um, so yeah, that's it. And this is where the sound was coming from. That we're not going to need the sound from it for now. I'm just going to take the, the the mofo and make that, or not make it, but like uh, set it up to hear it. So here we have this, and if I just play it there, then we can get some sound right out of it. So I love this little red button that it has right here because it, it immediately lets you test the sound. Since it doesn't have a keyboard to play, it lets you test the sound immediately. So um, let's, uh, let's set this up now to be able to, and I hope it's still going. I, haven't, I, I really haven't touched it since last week, so it should be really set up to go. I'm going to uh, start the playback on my Ableton. It seems to be going already. Yeah, look at that. And that is because maybe the external instrument is already set up and, and playing. So let me see the external instrument. Let me stop this and put it in external instrument mode. And that's the thing now. It's a different mode. So it already has the pattern that we were playing on last week. Uh, kind of saved in there, um, so it's already playing us something from last week, and I kind of like it. So let's uh, and let me just lower the volume on this one. This one's kind of running through the speaker, and let's let's find a, a sound that we like. So. Eventually, I'll get lucky and find out. Maybe I'll try to program it again. So there's kind of a lot of low notes in there. So let's uh, let's take this to to tap mode, and I'm gonna clear. The way you clear this is that you hold down the notes that might be played the clear button and you each one of these these uh little buttons here represent a different note that i could be programming into here so this one that i haven't held down yet maybe it's here maybe it's here maybe it's here <laughs> well, somehow, there we go we got them so we got them all and now i could like tap in because it's in a uh, tap mode so i could just play out uh whatever program I want, so I'm just going to tap in a couple of notes, maybe up here on the higher side of things. Now I'll switch it to another part, I mean another sound. Pretty cool, but not too really well. Let's stick to that. Now I can play with the cutoff and the resonance. So I'm going to record a pass of that. So I'm going to get another track going, make sure this is on 15 and 16. Make sure that this is when it's being monitored. So if I lower the volume on it, you'll see the monitor go down. I'm just gonna record it. I'm gonna make it come in with the, with the cutoff really low. And, and I'll just record a pass of me kind of playing with the filter. And I'm gonna start turning the cutoff and opening the filter up. 
Now the filter is a low pass filter, and if it's turned all the way to the left, it's closing the, the filter, meaning it's stopping all the higher frequencies from coming out and only letting the lows pass. But as I turn it to the right, I'm getting more frequencies included in the spectrum, and that's why it's turning to be brighter. This would be a good way to intro part. I like to do little passes because it's like kind of jamming and it gives you a, a nice feeling. I'll play with the resonance as well. Maybe I'll do two hands at the same time. Play with the decay, maybe that's going to mess it up, but I don't care. Decay is how long the notes are going to play. it up again to end up kind of where we started with this. Now we're back to kind of a closed filter setup. We've recorded a good amount of time here and I'm just gonna hit it and let it loop again. And now I've, I've, I've lowered the level on the actual mofo so we're not listening actually to the mofo anymore we're actually re listening to the recording we made here so we have very nice you know, if you remember what we did everything that we did is actually going to be playing back for us so in the meantime, I'm going to continue to add parts in here. I'm going to do it at a faster pace now. I'm going to bring back the, uh, the, the 909 in here. And I'm going to play some, some hi-hats in. So I'm going to put this in. Um, I'm going to take it out of external uh, sync mode, um, external instrument mode. And I think I have to stop it for that. So I'm going to stop it for the moment and uh, set it up to uh, just uh, take it out of external uh, instrument mode so it just I can just program the ins the, uh, the the drum sounds in it and restart it and I still have it in tap mode so I'm just gonna tap in some open and closed hi-hats here it is so if everything's working right I should be able to just tap in a quick uh, set of hi-hats in here and let's see how that goes <laughs> open okay that's pretty cool so let's set up another channel here before that let's just rename that quick to the mofo and let's get another track going in here make sure the input is the right input 15 and 16 it's really loud so i'm going to lower it on here so it's not in the red As you can see, when you turn these, these are opening and closing the decay on the, on the hi hat sound. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a little pass that kind of goes with this, uh, with this mofo part that we got going on here. So let me, um, let me do that. I'm gonna stop it. Uh, for some reason, I think I lost my overhead camera, but that's okay. Let me see if I plug it in again. But if it doesn't, we'll just do it with the with the Ableton one. And here we go. Let's uh, let's record that pass of of hi hats. And I'm going to record it to the Mofo. Uh, so I'm going to try to just jam along. So I'm going to take a longer take of the hi hats. You'll see what I mean. Here we go. <laughs> So the hi-hats are being recorded there, but I'm now playing with the decay on the open, on the closed hat. And you can see the changes. See how that changes that? It's kind of making it a very organic feeling. And it feels like somebody's actually playing that. Well, I am playing that. So 
the open. before um, I started recording because then the clips themselves would say 909 hats on them but okay this is good enough for now but again here we have all these parts going on here and this one I'll mute because this is kind of our opening track here all right pretty cool so um, let's start a hasty arrangement on this meaning let's get something going on the on the um, on the arrangement view. Now, let's uh, we have only four parts, so we got to be kind of simple here. So what we'll do is we'll just restart everything and get recording. We'll make sure that automation gets recorded in case we we're going to do some automation, and we'll hit record and hit the kick drum. We'll start the kick drum and with the mofo. And as you see, on the other side, things are already recording in there. Um, I think the hats are playing, uh, recording in there because I have the hats arm for recording. So I'm going to take off arm for recording on the hat so it doesn't record anything in there. That's okay. There's no problem. If I had some information in here or some something recorded in here, would have recorded over it if I didn't have the overdubbing button on. But that's okay. That's pretty cool. So I'm gonna soon. I feel like something should be coming. I'll let that build up by itself, and then let's let's get some mono tribe in there. Not bad. out and take out the kick for a little bit. And bring in a low frequency kick. Now, this, you know, I'm making it up as I go along, so don't sue me if, if uh, you don't like what the results are, but it's not so bad. You gotta do these things in order to try to get ideas going. Once it gets going again with the opening of the filter and, and the hi-hats and it starts becoming a fewer pitch, maybe I'm going to bring back the, uh, the higher, the, the punchier pick, the punchier 909. Here we go. It's coming back now. The energy starting to get bigger. 
getting in the red over here. I'm not worried about that for now. I'm going to be able to lower all the levels later. I'm not really worried if that's going to hurt anybody yet. And let's look at what's happening in the arrangement view, which is really cool that we already have a little hasty arrangement going. Let us stop the recording now and go back to the arrangement. And now we can see that we have some cool stuff in there ready to go. And all I have to do is, uh, we didn't need, really need that, so I'm just going to delete that. All we have to do is just play it back and we're already in there. Now, now I see that... Uh, there's a question in the chat. Are you putting the external sounds into Ableton Live program yet? Yeah, the answer is yeah. Everything that is playing now is actually something that was uh, recorded in from an external hardware. We don't have any um, anything coming from Ableton's instruments at all. Really cool. So now we can start processing though some of these sounds, and we could do some some pretty cool stuff with it. Let's add let's add a little bit of, of glue compression to the kick just to kind of even it out. And we talked about everything being too loud, so it's gonna be in the red. So I'm gonna just get everything kind of lower together that way be a problem to be in the red. But let's play with the glue compressor now. serious about mixing it we'll uh we'll worry about you know all the levels but the truth is i like to say that mixing starts at the beginning anyway so we should be mindful always of our um, of what we got going on when we when it comes to headroom so let's let's make sure we do that these levels up here so that we can get a little more finer detail in our movement here let's go to that baseline and add some compression to it as well just to get that a little bit smooth and over and let's add a little bit of something else to it i don't know maybe maybe a little bit of Oh, let's try what, what's happening here in the... I got a couple of other effects in there. Let's try a bit of the delay. Well, that's the mono tribe. I want the mono bow. That's cool. And this is the echo device. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's get that in there. Reverb here on the Mono Tribe. All right, so got a little foundation for something going, and it didn't take us very long. Uh, and again, everything that we have in here has been recorded from external sources. And I'll save this uh, this set, and we'll uh, we'll keep going um, with it uh, in the next week and beyond that and we'll keep on adding things and tweaking it and my intention is to make a whole production that uh that comes from that that you know is uh, based on stuff we recorded in using hardware um okay guys um let's see thomas are you there i'm here what's going on 
Oh yeah, I, I don't know. I lost uh, my overhead camera for some reason. I don't know what happened with that. But uh, it was ended up being decent timing. I mean, right when you're moving into Ableton, so yeah. seems like uh, you made a smooth recovery from that. Right. Yeah. You know. It's, but this is the kind of uh, living dangerous situation that we have here in mm-hmm. uh, 343 TV with our streaming. Uh, streaming is not easy. <laughs> yeah, there's always a little surprise uh, when it comes to this stuff. Uh, yeah. All right. Do you have any final announcements for us for today? Um, not not too much. I mean, basically, I would say if you are in the chat and you're working on music and you need feedback, definitely don't miss out on the opportunity to come tomorrow and uh, you know participate in the feedback session. It's going to be hosted by Atropolis. Um, aka Adam Partridge, who is a great, you know, talented producer. Adam is great, yeah, I have to say. And so you have the opportunity to come. You basically just show up to the stream with a link to stream your track, uh, your track, sorry, and um, you know you can get live feedback on the spot. And then other than that, you know, we have a bunch of courses starting soon. I put the uh, link to all those courses in the chat from a while ago. So uh, if you're interested at all in those, please head over to the the link and check those out you know you can get all the info there um but you know other than that you know keep tuning into these shows we love this throw group that comes back uh you know regularly here on fridays for the hardware i think it's really cool to see you know abe as he mentioned it's not the easiest to stream but especially what he's doing he's got you know cameras on the hardware cameras on himself you know, he's got ableton and uh you know Sean hall it all integrates together, which is, you know, no easy feat on a video, but to do it live is a whole different uh, ballpark. So I think this is definitely a unique thing that we bring here. So I'd encourage you to check it out again next week and bring your friends along too. Yeah, bring your friends. Bring your dad, bring your mom, bring granny. Uh, (laughs) Everybody's welcome. You sit there with your cat and watch us. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, we we got a lot going on here. I, I I have a lot of gear, and I'm really... Really, really happy to kind of show you guys what, what we can do with it. I don't know what we're going to add on next week. Uh, I'm kind of just kind of winging this a bit, not really. But, um, you know, I do really want to pull in more of these, uh, these toys that you might see in the background. Um, eventually, we'll, we'll go everywhere, depending on how long this series runs. Um, there, somebody said in the chat... Um, Let's see. Uh, hardware sounds to me cleaner and sharper than software, or is it just me? Um, well, I don't know about cleaner. I think so- software can actually sound cleaner. Um, you might, if you're going to he- feel and hear any grunge, it might come from from the hardware. Um, but the hardware does sound more alive, if you ask me, because you're able to interact with it more in real time as you record the parts. And as you, as you heard me record those hi-hats, for example, uh, you know, it's one pattern that you could have, say, in a drum rack if you're using Ableton or a drum machine if you're using Bitwig or, 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 um, or uh, FL or whatever. But to be able to like interact with those with those parameters of like opening and closing decay, and maybe later we'll we'll add some other parameters that we can just kind of fool around with and kind of jam in there with. Well, mm-hmm. to be able to do that uh, brings everything to life, and that plus the fact that analog stuff does kind of with the electrical current kind of fluctuate, and it's, you're never really hearing the same exact thing twice. Um, it does really kind of get uh, get something going that doesn't really easily happen in, in software. You can get some cool stuff out of software. Don't don't take me as a software hater. I actually love software, but um, but analog still has that kind of like instant kind of connection and and, and analog connection with you that uh, is is hard to have via a mouse, um, and that's that's that. So yeah. any any last words? Um, Just to bounce off what you said, like, uh, I think hardware, you know, it's an amazing time for hardware. You know, there's all these kind of oriented synths and stuff, which upon first arrival with all the digital modeling and stuff going on, they didn't quite emulate the real deal hardware that you're working with at first. But I think over the years, it's gotten, you know, pretty incredible what you can you can get for, you know, a few hundred bucks. These you know, clones of the classic Moogs and all that. So if yep. you're at all interested, you know, the price point is really not all too high to dive in there and oh, strike yeah. in your hands on some stuff. Oh, yeah. Like the, the, the Arturia stuff, for example, that that stuff is amazing. 
Uh, you, mm-hmm. you you go ahead and, and play with that, uh, like the uh, mini Moog or whatever they have. They have so many, CS80, for example. And, yeah. oh, my goodness, that's that's just, that sounds amazing. Um, still, though, there's that, you know, you could map controls to controller, and but a lot of people don't don't bother to do that. And I think that's kind of sad that you, you get a controller with a lot of lo- knobs and, and, and faders, and, and, and you can map out the whole synth to it and then you could really kind of turn all these parameters like the cutoff and the and the resonance and the decay and and so on and, and really get that kind of alive feeling out of the out of the software that 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 moment that you have to kind of get everything um kind of mapped out it, it stops people it kind of it kind of work and it really kind of not inspiring type of work but when you can get that going um uh, that really um gets as close as you're going to get to hardware um, but I hardware agree. has that kind of just built into it already. Anyway, sure. with that, I think we uh, we are at the end of our show for today, Thomas. Sadly enough, um, mm-hmm. we have we'll be back next week, and um, don't miss tomorrow. Metropolis is amazing, and um, then don't miss the rest of the next week. We have plenty packed, uh, planned, and packed for you uh, for next week. Um, all right Thanks. then, Thomas. Uh, I'll see you all soon yep we'll see you soon don't forget to subscribe take it easy everybody oh subscribe we want to make max happy (laughs) one million subscribers by the end of the year right (laughs) yep that's the goal all right bye now thomas you there yes i am all right cool man that was sweet i don't know what happened to my overhead it just died yeah, Max is having having a similar issue with his M50. So. Oh, but you know, it it hit with him. I told him what to do. He has to um, he has to uninstall the utilities, the Canon utilities. If you have the Canon utilities and the Beta at the same time, they fight each other. Are you still there? Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, I think uh, I think we're not. Uh, So I guess I'll let this run. I don't know if you've got to go and you got to...